Okay, 2 Kings 21, we're going to pick up in 2 Chronicles 33. 2 Chronicles 33, we're going to look at the complete story of Manasseh, because it's an interesting story. And eventually, Lord willing, we will get to 2 Chronicles 33, but to read what we're reading in 2 Kings 21, we'll pick up 2 Chronicles 33, 1. Again, this is more detail. Studying scripture with scripture, you get more detail. When God repeats something twice, three times, four times, you got to pay attention. Manasseh was 12 years old. And we looked at uh, his father, Hezekiah, was given 15 years. When he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years, the longest reign in Jerusalem. But did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Now Judah did have good kings. They had bad kings. Here is a bad king. Israel North had all bad kings. Wicked kings. And notice evil. God sees evil. You can't hide. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good, said Solomon. So bar rooms and, and, and theaters are dark and black and, and no one can see, God can see. Like unto the abominations of the heathen, and we've done this last night, 2 Kings 21. So you can get 2 Kings 21 and review what we're reading here. Whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places that Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. They were gone. They're back. And he reared up altars for Balaam. Now, 2 Kings 21 says Baal. 2 Chronicles 33 says Balaam. Balaam. Now, I mean, Baal is one deity of deities of the fallen gods. Balaam, that I am, is plural Baal. There's more than one Baal. So in 2 Kings, we learned that Baal, he's worshiping Baal. 2 Chronicles is not a contradiction. He's worshiping all Baals. There were Baals of this city, Baals of that city, Baals of these people, Baals of them city. And when you threw out the Bibles, you read, you'll see places in people's names, Baal, then something. And you're dwelling in a time and a place in the Middle East where nations had their own deities. Abram came from Ur, and their deity was the moon goddess, as you would see Islam today, the moon. Every area, when even in the New Testament, the book of Acts, Ephesus had great Diana. So what we're looking at here is he's not just worshiping the Baal here in, Jer in Jerusalem. He's wor worshiping the Baal there, wherever else Baal was. All kinds of Baals. Just in case one bale failed him. And made groves for Baal for and worship all the hosts of heaven. We talked about that, Lord willing, last night, and served them. Not only did he go to church of the stars, but he also took, tried to take care of the stars. Incense, offerings, whatever those the religion was. Burning candles selling magazines, making all kinds of children, taking off people's heads. Listen, all that religion goes back to Babylon. It goes back into the, to the Bible. And he built altars, plural, in the house of the Lord, the temple, where the Lord had said, in Jerusalem shall my name be forever. And now you got Baal. Baal's name's there too. You probably had two lines. One line for, for, for Jehovah at his altar. And we're going to read there's going to be other altars. And then you have probably had another line for Baal's altars at the same place. It was messed up. Today you got churches. We got the old people's service. We got the young people's service. We got the toddler's service. We got vacation Bible service. We've got these people's service. What you like, you come to the service of your pleasing. You don't like Jehovah? We've got Baal over here. 
You don't like bail? We even have S-Star for your one time. And you can even come to the other line for Christmas for your two types. I mean, nothing new under the sun. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven. Those are the stars, constellations, in the two courts of the house of the Lord. Again, that would be the people's court and the priest's court. So the priests had been defiled. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hanan. That's Molech. We've got Baal, you got Molech, two known gods here. Also, he observed times. Again, I, like I said, mentioned the night, Nancy Reagan. People will not do things. You call them and say, hey, you want to have lunch Friday, 2 o'clock? Wait a minute, hold on. I can't. And they may not tell you the reason why, but they probably looked in the newspaper. They probably looked in their cards. They probably shot whatever they do. Uh, my stars say no. My future outlook of my aurora is not, can't do it. And that goes on today. We go to a flea market here every once in a while, and there's a woman there with her tarot card. I poke my head and say, did you know I was coming? <laughs> and there are people that will seriously seek those people. And it would be so funny back when I grew up, or, uh, 20s and 30s, they had these 900 numbers. Or psychic network. And I always had a disclaimer about for entertainment purposes only. I'm going to tell you something. That's not entertainment person. This is the realm of Satan. And you see many times magicians and you see sorcerers and you see works of Satan. Just go ask Saul and the Witch of Endor. That was not entertainment purposes only. The devil wants you to think, oh, you can have fun. You can have a little pleasure. You can have a little, a little pleasure, Hebrew says in chapter 11. But when the piper comes comes to start playing, don't you think this this is serious stuff? And use enchantments, you know, eye of new and all the kinds of things. You can get books like that in witchcraft. And use witchcraft. So be careful. God says witchcraft enchantments are wrong, are sin. And dealt with familiar spirits again, spirits that you know. Saul knew who Samuel was and asked for him to be conjured up. A woman will go and say, can you bring up my husband? Because I need to know. And I can't tell you if it's really her husband or fall, fallen angels. But it's true. The realm of Satan and his power. And with wizards. I told you last night, there are advertisements on Google how to be a Christian wizard. Uh, it, it's re that's like having two words together, recycled toilet paper. It don't go together. He wrought the work much evil in the sight of the Lord. Lord's watching to provoke him to anger. Witchcraft and wizards and magic provokes God to anger, but I'm a Christian mag magician. That's an oxymoron. I'm a Christian, but I look at my horoscope. That's a more that's moronic. He set a carved image. That means he he made it himself. Purpose. Uh, Aaron goes up to Moses. Well, you know, I threw this gold and out came this calf. No, the Bible says you fashioned it. And to be a carved image would be not a picture. This would be wood, stone, or something that you chisel, whatever you out carved, for a particular image. The idol which he had made, it became an idol. Idols are not good. He made an aid of worship. In the house of God. Look at that. He put this image where God said, my name is there. I'm going to meet with you. And when they come to serve the God of Jerusalem, they walk in there. Here's all these different idols. And here's all these different gods and pictures and imagery. And that is found in the church today. I have been in Baptist churches where there's a plaque on the wall. Some of them had a picture of the guy's face and good old writing about that. And that guy may have been great. But when you look around, there's no Bible verses. The great, wonderful pastor that we have. What about Jesus? Oh, don't ruin our fun. 
Why do you got to ruin our fun? Why did you have to mention Jesus? We're, we're going to have a surprise party for our pastor. We're going to have pastor appreciate. And you had the nerve to bring Jesus' name in here. I'm sorry I ruined your day. In the house of God. So it is possible to bring the devil into church. Revelation 3 says Jesus is standing outside the light of the same church, knocking on the door with the, with the devil in the front row, amen, in the preacherette or preacher. But which God has said to David, to David and to Solomon, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, Judah, who I put my name forever, and now you have Baal or whatever he calls. Churches will have Christmas trees and they can't read Jeremiah 10. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel out of the land, which I appointed for the for your fathers, so that they will take heed to do all that I've commanded them. <clears throat> that land is Israel's land by God. I don't care what the United Nations say. I don't care what the king says. I don't care what the Arabians say. I don't care the people that put the fuel in your tank say. I don't care what the president says. I don't care what anybody says. That land belongs to Israel, and they're having problems in that land right now, which they will pretty soon as we come to the close of 2 Kings and when we come to the close of 2 Chronicles. It's because of sin, but God is not finished with them. I have been told by a missionary over in the Middle East that there are... I don't know if you call them public schools, but the schools for the children, when they pull that map down, they got the Middle East. There's a big no-name area where Israel should be. They don't call it Israel. And I forgot to my stupidity to ask them what they called it, but it's, they pull a map, map down in the Middle East. It, Israel's not on the map. To do all that have commanded them according to the whole law and the statutes and the ordinance of the hand of Moses, that's not church age. That's not Catholic churches over there now. Say, come over here and see this lying place where Jesus was. Come over here and see this place where Jesus died. Though it's in the city, though the Bible says he was outside the city when he died. Come over here and see where Mary, see, you see those prayers right there. That's where Mary bent down on her knees to confess her No, she didn't say confess her sins. She was completely, come over here and see this. Come over and see this. No. That's Jewish land. That's Hebrew land. That's not Gentile land. My land is New Jerusalem. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err. That's the first time that word shows up. <laughs> made him err. And we saw that over and over with Noah, the sins of Rehobo uh, Jeroboam who made Israel to sin. Now we see Manasseh doing it. And we learned last night that Manasseh was doing the sins of Israel. Though Israel, remember, Israel has been in captivity. They've been taken away under Hezekiah because their sins. Manasseh comes up 12 years added to uh, Hezekiah. He is probably known for sure and seen the revival that his father set forth, those high places that his father tore down. He's built them back up. He knows, has been told of the sins of Israel, and he's doing himself. So you got to say, well, how come I tell these people about Christ they won't believe? He, you just confess you don't read your Bible. Did not Elijah tell Ahab and Jezebel what was right? Yep, they didn't do it, did they? Did not God speak to Adam, Adam and say, do not eat of that? And he did it. And so Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err. And, did, and to do worse than the heathen, whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel, the people that were in the land before them. And the Lord spanked the Manasseh. Now, we, now we're getting on ground. We were not in Kings 21. God spoke to Manasseh. We read in uh, 2 Kings 20, God sent prophets to his people, but they would not hearken. God sent the prophets. They wouldn't listen. God sends street preachers. God will send somebody knocking on your door. God will have a co-worker give you a gospel track. God will have you given a eulogy. God will have somebody speak about Jesus Christ. We had a police officer one time, and respect, respectful, I pray for the police officer. Where's your crowds of people? The Bible says there is no crowds of people. You couldn't understand. 
Wherefore the Lord brought, oh, here we go. Here's something new. Wherefore the Lord brought, the Lord brought upon them, the people of Israel, uh, Judah, Jerusalem, the captains of the host of the Assyrians, the same people that took Israel captive. God says, I got a job for you. Why did God allow this to happen? Judgment upon sin, one reason of many. I'm not going to get to all the reasons. One reason God may allow something to happen, because you're a sinner. And God is judging you. And look back in your past. Did God send people to you to speak to you? God is not going to say, okay, oh, God can't wake up. But this God woke up in the morning and said his alarm clock. Said, oh, you know, today I'm just going to wipe out this nation just for the heck of it. Just for the joy of it. Angels watched it. No. I then we're going to make that guy's life miserable just because I want it. No, God's not like that. Though people say, well, <coughs> why did God do this? God's not like, God will send somebody to you, to you as an individual, to you as a group of people, or to you as a nation. He will send somebody. He did in verse 10. Hey, need to get right, need to do right. If you don't, trouble's coming. America's had enough preachers. America's had enough witness of the Bible. King of Syria, which took Manasseh among the thorns. You say, well, that's kind of interesting. Judges chapter, keep your place in Chronicles, but Judges 8, 16. Judges chapter 8, verse 16. And I didn't get this to the second time or third time reading through this passage. And I went, wait a minute. You just think thorns. Maybe they put a thorn of crowns on his head like they did Jesus, but that's not the case. Judges 8, 16. It says, And he took the elders of the city, the thorns of the wilderness, and briars, and with them he taught the men of Sokol. Now look at verse 7. For the more content. And Gideon said, Therefore, when the Lord has delivered Zebeth and Zemelah into my hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. That's the first time briars shows up. What did the king of Assyria do to Manasseh as Gideon did to those leaders of that nation? He pulled his pants down, took some thorns, and gave him a beating. If he didn't do it on his buttocks, he did it on his back. He got a beating with thorns. Now, the Bible says a rod, Proverbs. For a child, you use a rod. I wouldn't be afraid to say that. That's what the Bible says. You got a, the, the, If the nation's got a problem with a rod in your child, then go find another nation and let that nation be damned. Bible says a rod. But here, thorns, judges. You ever had, you ever touch a rose and get, you know, you get stung by it or a bit, whatever you call it, with a rose with a thorn, you get pricked? That one thorn, it's like, how? Oh, and you, you know, you suck your thumb or what your finger. Here is thorns just whipping Manasseh. Thorns was part of the curse upon Adam for disobeying God. So upon Manasseh, the thorns upon Jesus' brow. You know, they you know, they just didn't take that thorns and put it on Jesus' head. The Bible says they took those palms and they whammed it upon his head. They said, you can't touch those thorns they put on Jesus' head. They're so sharp. And I've seen the actual thorns that come from that area of Israel. They're hard to touch. And they said they weaved it into a, into a round thing and formed it upon his head. This is what happened to Manasseh. Bam! With the thorns. Paul says, a thorn in my side. Ow, pain. No time out. No, you can't have your telephone for 15 minutes and counting. And bound him with fetters, that's handcuffs, feet cuffs, and chains. And carry him to Babylon. That is a pre, I don't know what the word would be, but that's where Judah's going later on into Babylon. And it was told Hezekiah, Hezekiah said, hey, Babylon, see everything I got? Look at everything I got here. And Isaiah says, that's all going to be carried to Babylon. Babylon now has Hezekiah's son. And they're probably studying him. Mm 
What's that? Genesis 3.18. Genesis 3.18. Yeah, yeah, my ears are, so bear with me. And when he was in affliction, he went to Babylon in cuffs, and they afflicted him. He didn't get and watch TV and work out with weights and get a good meal. He didn't sit down at, at a computer and learn a trade and learn how to do more crimes. As a king, he's been reduced down to a prisoner. And he besought the Lord his God. Look at that. Pain and suffering brought him to God. Man, I pray that for my dad. And I have seen my dad be brought down, whether by God, by himself, or by the devil. I'm not going to say God did it. But I have seen the Lord do a work and come back as still not trusting the Lord. Manasseh acted a whole lot differently than people who were put under affliction. He besought the Lord now mark that down, his God. He's left Baal. He's left Molech. He's left the stars in heaven. His God. Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, that's Jehovah. Orion is not his God no more. And humbled himself greatly, look at the Holy Spirit, before the God of his fathers. Hezekiah, Solomon, David, Jacob, Abraham. That guy is going back into history now. He's looking back and saying, all right, of my fathers, my grandparents, of my family heritage, who has done right to God? I'm going to follow them. Ahaz, he wasn't a good king. Not going to follow him. My father was a good man, a good man to look. I'm going to follow him. And he prayed unto him, God. And he was entreated of him, God, and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. He got the kingdom back. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. All right. Can I sin a wicked, vile sin that God can never forgive? If you're dealing with somebody like that, remember Manasseh and go back and show them what Manasseh has done. Manasseh tore up, I hate to say it like this, but the church of Jerusalem, he tore it up. He brought in all kinds of imagery. He brought in all kinds of God. He messed up the whole temple and the temple service of God. He had lines for this God. He had lines for that God. He had lines for this service to that God. And he had God. And God said, you want to get right? <laughs> Lord God, I want to get Okay. Man, you, you kept track of your, your horoscopes and stuff like that. You want me? Yes, Lord God, I want you. You've been killing your sons. You've been killing your children. In the Bible, the Old Testament law states, there was no sacrifice for murder. You've killed your children, Manasseh. You want to get right with me? Oh, God, please let me back. What do you do with that in the law? Do you say Manasseh went to hell? I say that's the sure mercies of David there. I say Manasseh, Manasseh's heart got right. David murdered. David committed adultery. And he got right with God and God forgave him. Solomon had a thousand wives and they turned his heart away from God. And yet God, merciful, long-suffering of God, even in the Old Testament, now, after this, he built a wall. <laughs> Trump would love that. Yeah. Without the city of David, and I just watched a great video today, but, man, they're finding all kinds of archaeological information, and this is not going out in the media. They have proved today, I, I was it today or yesterday I watched this video, that the area where David and Goliath happened was 
purely Jewish because there was no dogs, there was no pigs. And it was a battle area because they find all these swords and knives and arrows everywhere. They're going to find a wealth of information in the city of David. I didn't really realize people, didn't, some people don't even believe David. I know some people don't believe in Jonah, but David, on the west side of Gahan, in the valley, even to the entering in the fish gate, and compass about Ophel, and raise it up at a very great height. This area here that Manasseh does is going to be repaired and fixed, the fish gate, under Nehemiah. After Babylon will come between now and Nehemiah and destroy everything. And raise up a very great height and put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah. Build all the fenced cities you want. But if you got God against you, these cities, are, these walls are destroyed. Where are these walls today in Jerusalem? They got one weeping wall. And no temple. And he took away the strange gods. Well, look at that repentance. I wish churches will get rid of the strange gods. Drums. And the idol out of the house of the Lord. Man, he got right. He came in. He starts. He has his building project. He walks in the temple and say, "What are you doing, Manasseh? I'm getting rid of this crap." This stuff is going. But didn't you make it? Don't you reference my name? We're going to serve God, Jehovah. That altar right there. That's the altar that Solomon made. That's the one we're going to serve. This crap, I need help. Someone help me get rid of it. You know, it took one man to destroy that golden calf of Aaron. It has taken one man to destroy the gods of Jerusalem. It takes one man. Strange gods. That's the heathen gods. That's gods that Israel was not to ever to know. And the idol of the house of the Lord in all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord. Now Jerusalem is built on a mountain. All those altars he set up, they're gone. They're out. And in Jerusalem, he cast them out of the city. They don't even belong in the city. He repaired the altar of the Lord. Oh, something's wrong with that altar. All right, let's fix it. He fixed his life up. There is no one ever who has committed such a sin that God says, no, I can't allow you. No one. Look at what Manasseh's done 55 years. Look what he's done. And look what's happening now. He's getting right. And, and he repaired the altar of the Lord and sacrificed their uh, peace offerings to God on that offering. And thank offerings. Boy, he's thanking God for this change. He's thanking God for the mercy. He's back in Jerusalem. He's, <clears throat> he's not being afflicted any longer. Thank you, God. You can't even get Christians in America that one day in the year that George Washington had a proclamation, we're going to give thanks to God of the heaven for the wonderful work. No, got to hurry up, hurry up, got to hurry up. You know, we got to go waste our money. I'd be amazed if within time you receive the Lord. To, I'd be amazed. I'd probably the Antichrist again. You're going to get rid It won't be Thanksgiving anymore. They're going to change that name. They have already traded and changed the name of history in the pilgrims. It's going to be preparation to the Black Friday. Warm up your plastic for Friday. Something like nonsense. And commanded Judah, commanded Judah, church and state, Oh! Commanded you to serve the Lord God of Israel. Now, can't you just see God? Hey, Manasseh, that's church and state. Can't do that. God's a man. I like what he's doing. Come here, angel. Check, check, look at this. Look at He is mad at that stuff. And he made that. And now he's telling Israel, Judah, he's telling Jerusalem, get right with me. Only fools would get up and say, they'll say, oh, America, come back to God. And if, if any president would come up, would say, oh, everybody, we're going to get right with God. We're going to put our, and then the Christians will get upset. I got rights. 
Nevertheless, uh-oh. Nevertheless, there's some. It wasn't a complete law. He commanded, but nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in high places. Yet unto the Lord their God only. That's not the church age today. What is it? They're taking their sacrifices, which you find in the law. God said you're to bring it to one place and only one place. Well, I like the be beautiful majesty, mountains, purple, mountains, purple, garbage, whatever you want to do. God's with me in the, in the hills. God's with me in the trees. There it is. But we're not under one place in the church age today. Where two or three are gathered together, they're not even in the midst of them, said Jesus. Don't go be knocking uh, living room religion if somebody's trying to start a work from Jesus. Meanwhile, your work is a dead work. you got to try to do everything you can to get everybody to come to your congregation without going out and getting congregations. You know, when you got that one church philosophy in the New Testament, you are under the Old Testament law, the one place to me. But the book of Acts says they went house to house. Now the rest of the Acts of Manasseh, the rest of the Acts, the rest of the Acts, the rest of the Acts of Manasseh and his prayer. Wouldn't you like to know what that was? Unto his God. God is his God now. And the words of the seers, the men that God sent to him, the men that God is sending with him. He is seeking prophets of God. That altar is broken. Yes, sir. Can I fix it, or do I got to have special people to fix it? How's that? Is there special brass that thing needs? Is that temple right now? I did a lot of mistakes in that temple. I, I erred in a way. Is everything in that temple right now, Levi? Is everything supposed to be the way God wants that to be? He is seeking the counsel of men of God to do right. That spake unto him in the name of the Lord God of Israel. Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. That's Second Kings and Chronicles. His prayer also, how God was entreated of him. That's got to have been a special prayer. You know what the special prayer today is? Somebody who's wickedly sinned. Lord God, forgive me, the merciful sinner that I am. And Lord, only by the grace and the finished work of Jesus Christ am I able to be saved. That one man that, that knelt down, Jesus said, stroke his chest, said, Lord God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And all his sins. Did you just get that? Didn't we just read a great pile of sins in two books? Last night and tonight. And God said that wasn't even a touch of the iceberg. <laughs> Second Kings and Second Chronicles are not even the little touch of all his sins. There's someone written where he had all his sins. Now, if there's somewhere written all the sins, don't you think that somewhere it's all our sins that are written? And only sins that are not recorded are those that are under the blood of Jesus Christ. By salvation, and those that, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if your sins are not under the blood, there is somewhere written, all your sins. I have sins as a Christian that I have not repented or I have not fully repented with a repentant heart, and they're going to show up at the judgment seat of Christ. And his trespass. Oh, look at that. Sins and trespass. Where he crossed, God said, here's the line. Hit. Put my foot over it. Here's a chip on the shoulder. Boing, knock it off. And the places wherein he built high places. God has the place where those places were. And set up groves, right where the groves were. And graven images, plural, before he was humbled. <laughs> Behold, they are written among the sayings of the seers. Where are they? I don't know. 
You know why God doesn't want you to see those seer books and you can find them? You know why God didn't put them in the, in the book? Because God says, I forgive you. You, When you die, you go off to Abraham's bosom, I assume, or Old Testament salvation. If you went off to Abraham's bosom and when Jesus Christ suffered and died, he emptied paradise. The sins that God has forgiven them, they're gone. How's that? We just read in the Old Testament, God said, boy, this guy sinned, didn't he? All right, where is his sin? They're written in this book. All right, where's that book? I don't know. <laughs> I'll show you a place in one moment. We'll finish the verse. We're going to stop at 20. Well, we've got one more fight. So Manasseh slept with his fathers, and they buried him in his own house. That's kind of weird because when you look at the history of Israel, they buried people under their houses. I found that weird. And Amon and his son reigned in his stead. So what about these books? Revelation 20. Revelation 20. And I will come to a conclusion with Manasseh, a safe conclusion with Revelation 20. I can say of a surety, 100%. Revelation 20, verse 17. There will be no Christians here. We've been judged at the judgment seat of Christ. These will be people that are under the law, before the law, the tribulation, and the millennium. No church age people here. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. Kind of interesting. You know what the world calls that angel? It calls him Apollo. 1917. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the... Wait a minute, I'm in the wrong... Chapter 20. I'm in 19. Hold on. I'm 19. 20. 20 verse 11. I was in chapter 19. Forgive me. Chapter 20 verse 11. And I saw a great white throne. No church age here. And him that sat on it, God, Jesus Christ, Form whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. It was Mother Earth. And there was found no place for them. Mother Earth, gone. Bye. See you. All those rockets and, and stuff on Mars right now and all the probes and the, the, the Hubble telescope, they're going bye-bye. Junk. You can send me all the, which I enjoy those pictures of outer space, but one day I'm going to see the outer space, but the creator that made them. <clears throat> I, saw the, I saw the dead. Manasseh's dead. Small and great. He was great. He was a king. Stand before God. That's Jesus Christ. Unless you're a Jehovah Witness. And the books were opened. How's that? There it is. There's the books. The books were opened. Book of Sears, Book of Jasper. Which is the, uh, and another book was opened, which is the Book of Life. No, it says books and then the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. Today, Manasseh. According to their works, all the wickedness that Manasseh done. And then all the good things he's done. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell were delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Never Christian. How well did Noah do? How, low, how well did Naaman do? How about Enoch? How about Lamech? How about Abel? How about Cain? According to their work. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. All right, all the books are going to be open. Manasseh. Here's all his sins. Everything he's done. All right? He did what he's supposed to do according to the law and loved the Lord with all his heart as such as David has done. All right, let's bring the book of life. All right? Check his name. If his name is in the Lamb's book of life, he goes off to the new earth. If his name is not in the Lamb's book of life, he goes off in the lake of fire. I believe he's going to be in the Lamb's book of life. I believe he got right. He, he killed his children. David murdered. 
What gave David that repentance? The heart of David. The love for God. Didn't we just read about Manasseh? Man, that is my God. He's my God. Lord God, thank you. I am going to assume, I'm not knowing, but what we read with the Bible, that Manasseh's heart broke for God. And God said, okay. And he got the kingdom back and built it even stronger. So the final thing is, no Christians hear what we just read in Acts, I mean, Revelation 20. For all the people here, whatever they've done has been recorded, will be open. If their name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, they go into they go into the new earth or new heavens. King Saul, what was his state? I have no idea. If his name's in the Lamb's Book of Life, he goes to the new earth. If it's not in the Lamb's Book of Life, he goes to the lake of fire. The Pharaoh that loved Joseph and helped the children of Israel. Book of Life, is his name there? The Pharaoh that hate the Jews and gave him service with rigor. I guarantee he's probably not in that land's book of life. Tamar, she's in the line. Of, what about her? Well, Rahab, the, the harlot in, in, in Jericho. All those people are going to be judged. If their name is in the last book of life, I don't know. They go off into, into the light. So it's just a remarkable study of Manasseh. No one is too wicked that God can't save your soul. I believe Judas could have even got saved if he didn't go to the priest, if he went to Jesus. You imagine if Judas came to Jesus and said, Lord Jesus. Someone had to do it, and Lord God, you said that. And, I, and Jesus said, Lord, I repent. I, what do I need to do? You think Jesus said, get out of here? You, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. There's only one group of beings that can't ever get saved. That's the angels that fell with Satan. And we shall judge them one day. <laughs>